The Dow Strong Omega Karitsuke knife is designed to be the ultimate multi-purpose knife in your kitchen arsenal. We show you if it lives up to the hype coming up. You might be used to hearing names like Wustoff, Shun, Hinkles, or Victorinox if you shop for knives at a retail store here in the United States, but if you shopped on Amazon, you've probably seen the Dow Strong brand in your search. In fact, today when I type in the broad search term chef knife in Amazon, Dow Strong is the first knife that they show me as a result. So let's start with a disclaimer. I'm not a professional chef who spends eight hours a day in the kitchen chopping food for hungry, hungry customers. I'm a home kitchen and an outdoor cooking nerd who's always on the lookout for the best gear and I love my knives. I've asked for knives for Christmas from my family for the last 20 years and I'm a firm believer that you can't have too many knives in the kitchen. We've been using the Grand Prix series of knives from Wustoff for over 10 years and they're amazing knives. They're our workhorses and we use them for everything. They are German style knives and the German style is pretty much what we've stuck to for many years due to their durability and curved edge for a rocking style chop. Most Japanese knives have a straight edge for push cutting rather than a rocking style cut, so we're talking about a difference in how you use many Japanese knives when compared to their German counterparts. But enter the Damascus style of knife. The first time I saw a Damascus knife, I knew I had to have one. That gorgeous wave that is found throughout the blade just calls to me because it adds a real wow factor to an everyday kitchen tool. I'm drawn to both form and function, and Damascus style knives took form to a whole other level and retained the function that we use every day in the kitchen. Brands like Shun, Enzo, Masamoto, and others have some of the sharpest and most beautiful knives on the planet, but let's be honest, they're kind of pricey. This is where Dow Strong comes in and lobs a grenade into the kitchen knife market. Dowstrong isn't a Japanese knife manufacturer like the brands we just mentioned. Dowstrong is a Canadian company manufacturing knives in China in a Japanese style. Today we're looking at the crown jewel of the Dowstrong Omega series, the 8.5 inch Kiritsuke knife. To put it into perspective, in the Dowstrong line of knives, here's a comparison of the main chef knife from each series. We start off with the Crusader series, and the 8-inch Chef's Knife is priced right at $59. Next is the Shadow Black series, and an 8-inch Chef Knife is available for $69. The Shadow Black series is black titanium nitride coated, so they're a stunner in their own right. We'll provide a link to each series below so you can head online and check them out. The Gladiator series is up next with an 8 inch chef's knife for $69, same price as the Shadow Black series above. The new Phantom series offers up their only chef's knife at 9.5 inches at a price point of $89. Then we take a significant step, step up to the Shogun series at $129, we find their chef's knife. And finally we round out the product line with the Omega series where the primary multi-purpose knife of the series is the 8.5 inch Karitsuke knife we have here. This knife is available for around $160 at the time of this video and as always you can check current pricing by clicking on the links in the description below. If you're new to Japanese knives, you're probably asking, what is a Karitsuke knife and how is it different from a chef's knife? Well, depending on who you ask, Karitsuke means either sword tip or slit open. It's a cross between two Japanese knives, the Usuba and the Yanagiba. The Usuba knife is traditionally used as a vegetable knife and the Yanagiba knife is primarily used for cutting raw fish for sashimi, sliced raw protein usually found in sushi. So question of the day, how do you say Usuba, Yenegiba, or Karitsuke? Spell it out phonetically in the comment section below to teach us all of our Japanese for the day. 
Kuritsuke knives are often associated with Japanese master chefs, and as they reach that status, they're oftentimes presented with the Kuritsuke knife. Now, there's some people who disagree with this idea, but Shun Knives, a trusted brand in the Japanese knife space, actually includes this story in their Kuritsuke knife box upon purchase, and it's also easy to find right there on their website. The Kuritsuke is also known for being one of the only multi-purpose knives in a Japanese set. There are, of course, Japanese manufacturers who make German-style chef knives, but this knife is designed for both slicing and chopping. With German-style knives, you're probably familiar with the rocking style of cutting, where you cut by rocking the blade back and forth on its curved edge. Japanese knives like the Usuba, Sentuku, and the Nikiri have a flat edge, so rocking back and forth isn't the way that they were designed to be used. These styles of knife were designed to be used with a push cut instead of a rocking motion. So let's go ahead and unbox this knife. We take out the outside sleeve, and then it gives us a lovely picture of what we're getting into here. We open the top. And we can see we have a nice little pen badge. We have a manual, a lovely little cleaning cloth with the Omega series on it, and then the crown jewel. Lovely knife. I like this leather sheath on the outside. And there we go. So we'll get into chopping with this here in just a second, but let's see what else is on the, in the box here. It comes with a stand, a few other bits of information there. Let's see what this looks like if we were to put it in the stand. And there we go. So this is meant to be both a functional knife and a conversation piece, nice piece of decor in the background. It has a lovely stand to go with it. But the whole idea is the stand is beautiful, but I don't plan on putting this on the stand. I plan on using it. So let's go ahead and take, let's take a second and look at the knife for a second. If you look, this is a nine and a half inch knife. And so we're talking about there's some actual really good coverage on the end. If I was to compare this to a Wusthof knife, <clears throat> this is our Wusthof Grand Prix 8 inch that we have, and this is the 9.5 inch Dalstrong. So, just to give you an idea on size, that's what we're looking like. So, the blades themselves, if you look at the blades themselves, blade to blade, you can see we've got a little bit more edge, a little bit more blade on the Dalstrong, but a little bit more cutting surface as well. But notice the difference in the angle. If you look at the Dalstrong, you see how it's still a relatively straight edge that starts to rock up over here, as opposed to the Wusthof, where you have this rocked edge, this curved edge almost the whole way over here. So this is made for that rocking style of chop, this is made for both push cuts and rocking style. So you can see they call this a multi-purpose knife primarily because it actually has a little bit of curvature to the blade as opposed to just a lot of those knives that we're seeing that straight uh, push cut uh, through. The handle here is made of G10 Garolite and I gotta say it feels really nice in the hand. This G10 Garolite is a fiberglass, a military grade fiberglass that this is made out of but it still feels nice in the hand. I mean, in comparison, I, I like them both. I mean, I, I would say that this feels, it feels really strong. It's a large handle. I have a relatively large hand, but I would say that the handle fits my hand really well. So I could see if you had a smaller hand that this might not fit quite as well as something like the, like the Grand Prix series from Rustoff. Um, but I have to say for my size hand, I like the way this feels. 
Um, this is a double-sided blade as well. There are some blades in the Japanese style that only have actually the bevel on one side, and they're meant to be used with right-handed or left-handed people. Uh, but this is actually a double-sided, so you could use it either way. But I gotta say, I'm looking forward to putting this to the test. Now, as you look at this, you can see that there's a really amazing looking design on the blade. This is actually stamped onto the knife and they call it liquid metal. This liquid metal add-on is a stamp at the end that's supposed, to, that's supposed to help make sure that whatever you're chopping falls away from the knife as opposed to sticks to the knife. And so we'll put that to the test here in a second and see how that goes. You also have the Dow Strong logo here. Now it looks like this is probably laser inscribed. Can't really tell. There's also a lovely little grommet here holding the knife and the blade together. Uh, that is really cool. The closer you look, the more detail it has. Also on the back of the knife, <coughs> uh, you see the Dow, Strong the Dow Strong logo on the back as well, which is nice <coughs> when you get to the heel of the knife. The Omega Karitsuke achieves a 62 or a 63 on the Rockwell hardness scale. The Wusthof, in comparison, gets about a 58 on the Rockwell scale, so it's harder than a Wusthof, which means it can hold its edge longer, but also can be prone to chipping. Now, this is made of American-made BDN1 steel, and just know that this is a really hard knife. A softer knife like the Wusthof might see the tip bend if it was dropped on the floor from countertop, but the harder the knife, the more prone it is to chipping, something to consider when you start looking at serious knives for your kitchen. A Shun hardness for the Premier Series is about a 62 as well, and a hardness of 1 equals about 10% harder, so there's a massive difference between a 58 and a 63. We're talking about 50 or 60% harder on the knife itself. Here's what the sharpness was like right out of the box. You've seen the traditional paper test where you take a knife and you take it and you go across paper to see how it looks. Let's go ahead and take a chance. I've got to say, out of the box, it's really sharp. With the paper test, we've been able to shred this paper pretty easily, and I've got to say, I'm liking the edge. Now, with the hardness level on this, you know this is going to hold that edge longer than maybe a Wusthof or something something less, less hard, but I have to say, on this, the edge is impressive right out of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and cut a few things to test, and in case you're like me, where you're not a professionally trained chef, one of the things I do is I put on a cut glove. This is a glove that actually has some material inside that makes it harder to cut through. So I put on a cut glove on my hand that I'm going to use on this side where I'm holding the food. And this cut glove still gives me all the dexterity I want, but it gives me the protection I need just in case something might happen. So this cut glove, we'll put a link in the description below, but also you'll notice that this probably isn't great for food handling, especially something that might be wet and or slimy or gooey. So what we like to do is we like to take a nice little nitrile glove and we'll put a nitrile glove on the outside and we'll of course put a link below for the nitrile glove as well. Great for prep and cleanup, makes it super easy. And then I'm protected and I also have an easy cleanup. So that's how we like to get started whenever we run a test. So with this Dow Strong Omega knife, <clears throat> we are gonna go ahead and run a couple of classic tests. The first test, is how does it handle a tomato? Now, a lot of times what we're talking about with a tomato is we wanna go ahead and cut it. A lot of times we'll use a serrated knife to get all the way through the skin. The thing is with this one, how, how sharp is it out of the box? So let's go ahead and find out. That my friends is pretty sharp. And when I say pretty sharp, I mean that's an understatement. Look how thin I can get a tomato off of this knife. And I'm barely applying pressure. I don't have to apply hardly any pressure to get that. That is gorgeous. Now it usually gets more problematic when I start getting into things like 
smaller items like a grape tomato. How could it, how will it do in a grape tomato? Same thing. Look at it just fillet that down. Look at how thin that is. It's see-through. <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and cut some celery and I like to use this pinch grip. Remember I have three fingers underneath and then I have the the uh, pointer finger and my thumb pinching the blade and this is the I'm gonna use this rocking chop method but this is traditionally how I would cut some celery with this Now we talk about the liquid metal releasing off the blade and it did release some, but we still have some on the blade. So the question is, is it exactly what we hope for when it comes to releasing off the blade? Um, is it better than a knife that doesn't have it? Probably, but I will say that sure cuts nice and easy. And lastly, we're having sweet potato fries for dinner tonight. So we thought we'd go ahead and cut up our sweet potatoes with using the uh, Omega series. And uh, just letting you know, we did go ahead and microwave the sweet potato for about 60 seconds to make it a little bit easier to cut because no matter how good your knife is, cutting a sweet potato is a chore. So about 60 seconds worth of, uh, worth of microwave to be able to get to this point. And you notice it doesn't go through like butter, but I don't know anything that goes through a sweet potato like butter. Maybe a mandolin, even a mandolin's kind of hard. So let's see if how let's see how it releases off of this side on this round through. It did release. It released everything in that series. Let's check this one. Everything but one. So I'm gonna say the liquid liquid metal finish. I don't know, it's kind of impressing me with how it actually is releasing the food like it says it would. So there's a few tests to see what this knife really does in action and to see if it actually is a good fit for you in your kitchen. So how do you know if the Dow Strong Omega is for you? If around $150 is what you're looking to invest in a good chef's knife, the Omega Kiritske, the Wusthof Classic Grand Prix Series 2 8-inch chef's knife, and the Shun Premier 8-inch are all between $155 and $189. We'll put links in the description below so you can learn more about each knife that we've talked about today. So, which type of knife do you use in the kitchen? Are you drawn to the German style or are you drawn to the Japanese style knife for your everyday work? Let us know which one you love in the comments section below. And I wanna say thank you for joining us here on the Barbecue Lab. I'm David Gafford and I look forward to seeing you right here next time.